what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel in today's video as you can see by the title we have my personal collection everything you see right here is in my personal collection as of today i am recording this on march 29th and this video is coming out about a week or so after i record this but i'm very excited to bring you today's video i don't know how long it's going to be in all honesty I won't know until I'm done recording. So if this is a fairly longer video, I do apologize, but hopefully you do enjoy it. And let's just dive right into it. So I have a couple different stacks here. Um, this one right here is mainly, this is all Kentucky players because I am a Kentucky basketball fan. Oh, just simple base cards, inserts. Here's a nice Donovan Mitchell. Love Donovan Mitchell. I know he didn't go to Kentucky. Getting outside of that now. Paul George, big Paul George fan. As you can see, I got a few rookies, a few more rookies of his. Cabrian Hayes auto. I actually pulled this auto at a Woo Sox game. I brought a, was it? No, actually, this was donated to me by Backcountry Cards. He opened a Contenders baseball hobby box and one of his six autos was this cabrian hayes auto he kept it down the road he then gave it to me a no mark garcia par georgia tech card because he was my first favorite player that's how i got into collecting and for baseball i was a big georgia tech fan for baseball and then here's a nice matt weeders uh on patch auto with the nice yellow jacket right there so just a hodgepodge of different stuff right here um Everyone around here probably knows that I'm an Alabama football fan. Don't worry, that's what this stack right here is for. And then other stuff is here. I want to show off this little pack. Uh, it's not Donruss. Can I get it back? Or is it a piece of tape? Oh, it's a piece of tape. This was a pack that was given to me from a kid who came by the shop. He's asked me if I if he could give me a pack that he made, a pack of cards that he made for me. I was like, absolutely. So he gave me the pack, and these were the cards that were in it, and I've kept it ever since. Roberto Perez, Matt Chapman, I want to keep it in order, give me a second. Tony Gwynn, Nolan Ryan. Oh, man, is this um Kurt Gibson? Yeah, this is a young Kurt Gibson right here. Oh, man, I don't know who this guy is. Albert Bell, Reggie Jefferson. That's not Frank Thomas. Tim Raines. Oh, man, this is like old school baseball players. Harold Baines, debatably in the Hall of Fame. Alex Cole. And then a Keenan Allen, Rookies and Stars, Chargers card. So, again, kid gave me this pack, and it was very thoughtful. This was a while ago. This was like over a year ago. So, I don't even think he's into cards anymore, in all honesty. But it was such a nice gesture, I had to keep it. All right, so there's that stack. Here, I'll go through the Alabama cards next. And again, as we move along, you're going to see that there's not a lot of cards that are worth crazy, crazy value just because cards in my personal collection are more sentimental than anything. And that's what I truly, truly believe that that's where you can really find the love and passion for this hobby is cards that mean something to you. Now, if monetary value comes with that, then so be it. But it doesn't need to for me. So here's just a bunch of different Bowman University cards that came out last year. This was the unlicensed version. Um, let's see, we have John Mechie, Marvin Mims, Bryce Young. Uh, Marvin Mims again, Kennedy Brooks, Jordan Battle, Bryce Young. Actually, let me put the two Bryce Young cards next to each other. It's been a little bit since I've gone through this, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Brian Robinson, uh, uh, Jaden Hasselwood. Robinson again and then Derek King obviously not an Alabama guy but the reason why I have Derek King in here a buddy of mine we would do a um like a fantasy franchise where you completely just take a team and you just have like a fantasy draft of the whole league well after the end of like the first year I would draft a quarterback in like the sixth seventh round and more often than not it was Derek King big fan of him I'm really not that good but I just love love the story behind it so that's why I continue to it's cool to have it as Bowen University. Uh, Bowen first, I should say. All right, so this is just going to be a hodgepodge of random Alabama cards throughout the course of different releases. Here's a nice uh, select field level red velocity. Sean Alexander, Devontae Smith Spectre Silver. This is from 
Should be from, don't tell me, don't tell me, Chronicles? Yes, Chronicles. Uh, Legacy, Dylan Moses, Prism Auto. Devontae Smith, Bit Prism Base. Here's Patrick Sertain, Season's Greetings. Here's a Yellow Cracked Ice, Patrick Sertain. Here's a Optic Sertain, Sean Alexander, Select Stars. This came out, yeah, this is part of the new uh, set that came out last year. Josh Jacobs. Jameson Williams, obviously he's in his Lions jersey, but still a really, really cool car. The glare is brutal. Sorry for that, guys. John Mechie, field level. John Mechie, was it Concourse? Brian Robinson, Concourse. Here's Mac Jones Prestige from last year, 2021 Prestige. Very cool card here. thing I like about this card a lot is that it's both his Alabama and Patriots. I think that is just really, really cool. Obviously, Patriots my favorite football team. Alabama's my favorite college football team. So, and Mac Jones is a product of both. Here's a nice Brian Robinson. Is this number? I think so. Maybe not. It is not, but it's a very nice extra points in search of Brian Robinson. All right, and it's about half the stack. Going through like the smaller stuff first, guys. Then we'll get into the, the nicer stuff. Sean Alexander again. There's going to be some doubles, I believe. Jameson Williams, uh, Silver Seasons Greetings. Here's a Slade Bolden auto, which I think the Patriots should pick him up. But don't think they will. This is one of five. Very cool card here. Another Slade Bolden. This is six of 15. Uh, he was one of Mac Jones' favorite targets at Alabama. 26 of 30 on the Slade Boltons. Jamison Williams, Evan Neal, Derek Henry, Derek Henry again, Najee Harris, Jalen Waddell, Jamison Williams, and what is this? This year's Prestige. Here's a cool one. Joe Namath, Collegiate Immaculate. Very cool card here. Probably the best quarterback to come out of Alabama. This is numbered 93 of 99. Very cool card. I like that a lot. Julio Jones. Jamison Williams Sparks, Brian Robinson, and Julio Jones again. All right, one more small stack. One more small stack. Derrick Henry, Jamison Williams, Julio Jones, Mac Jones. Let's fly through this. Marvin Mims, Jamison Williams Sparks again. I don't know why I have doubles, but I do. Jamison Williams, nice little silver refractor there. Really cool. Here's a cool Tua rookie phenoms silver patch from Optic. Devontae uh, Smith, rookie revolutions. Devontae Smith introductions, Eagles and Alabama jersey. Sean Alexander, rookie card from 2000. Very cool card here. And you can see how young he looks in his Seattle Seahawks jersey. And a nice Patrick Sertain, base absolute. So again, not a lot of value, guys, here. Not a lot of value, but it is sentimental value. And to me, that means a lot. So... Those are all the real cheap, cheap stuff here. And again, this stuff here is the nicer stuff that I have in my collection. And kicking it off is a T206 Howie Camnitz. This is a PSA 3.5. For those that don't know what a T206 card is, these cards came out from 1909 to 1911. They were inser inserted, randomly inserted, into cigarette packages. Because back in the day, cigarettes were very popular. And to help promote the popularity of baseball cards, they would randomly insert these T206 cards into them. So whenever you bought a package of cigarettes, you also got a complimentary baseball card as well. That's where the famous Hannes Wagner came from. Rumored that he didn't want his image being associated with cigarettes, so his, his production was pulled, hence why there's not so many of them. So, I mean, this is probably... I mean, I bought it for $100, uh year and a half ago is it that same price i have no idea i don't really care but i love the concept of a t206 trying to randomly insert baseball cards into a popular product of the day and just really trying to promote it so to have it in a three and a half is pretty cool um i don't know anything about howie camnitz or he couldn't even tell you what team he played for to be honest but very beautiful car the image on the back looks really good as well as it does on the front so very nice card here. And then we have a nice Ted Williams card. We got two Ted Williams cards. I'll show them both off. Um, I hate these four corner screw downs. I just, 
haven't taken it out yet. This is how I got it. Again, haven't taken it out. But I believe this is 1954, if I'm not correct. Or if I'm not incorrect, I believe. But here's nice 1958 Ted Williams. This is a PSA 4. This is obviously ungraded. Ted Williams, one of the best Red Sox of all time. One of the best baseball players of all time. Missed five years of his prime to serve in World War II. And I think he would have easily had 650 home runs, 3,000 RBIs. Oh, not 3,000. 3,000 hits, 2,500 RBI. He was just a machine. Absolute machine. And he went to go serve his country, which was the right thing to do back in World War II. You know, I've never really thought about grading this car in this little rip on the bag. I mean, I'll get a new bag for it. But I never thought about grading this card. Be very interesting to see what it comes back as. I don't think it's going to grade well. To see the corners, obviously. Corner and edge up there. Corner down there. Corner down there. I mean, it's not in the greatest condition, but... A thing about vintage cars that people really do love is the color. And the centering is actually really good on it. The centering on this card is really, really good. Um, obviously, here's the white border right there. There's the white border there. The white border at the top. The white border down there. So color and centering is actually a really good, sharp looking card. The back looks really crisp and very, really clean. Now I know I've been burnt on a Ted Williams vintage card before. I got this from a vintage dealer at a card show. Not just some random Joe Schmo on that walked in the shop. I've learned my lesson. I don't know. I mean, seeing how this got a four. I mean, obviously you still have the same corner issues. This is much more off center, top to bottom and left to right. And front to back could be better, but it's not terrible. But the color again on both copies is really good so i don't know i mean i would be astonished if it's less than a four in all honesty but i don't know something to maybe consider another day here's a really cool sentimental card of mine this is a fred lynn 1975 rookie card and of course there's other players on it as well but this is just how they made the rookie cards back in the day this is a psa 8 and why fred lynn well for those that don't know, uh, at the shop, I have a nice little plaque above or next to the sports wax. There's 19 and then there's 5. Well, 19 was Fred Lynn's number when he played for the Red Sox. And Fred Lynn was my dad's favorite baseball player. My dad collected Fred Lynn on and on and on and on. And he got me into collecting Nomar. As you're going to see, I have a couple Nomar cards coming up. And when I came across this, it was like $20. I was like, I have to get this card. You know, because my dad's favorite player... He got me into sports cards. He got me into collecting. So it was like a little homage. And I keep this in my PC as a homage to him. And again, the sentimental memory. Here's a nice card that I picked up at the shop early, early back in the shop when I first opened. This is a Pedro Martinez auto, bat, and jersey patch. Best part is it's a one of one. Look at that. Beautiful card. Very nice. And on top of it, the enclosed piece of jersey was cut from an authentic jersey personally worn by Pedro Martinez in an official M Major League Baseball game. Definitely cannot complain about that. Uh, also says authentic for American League pitcher who rarely hit. It's cool to see that there's a authentic game used bat patch as well, along with the auto. So I really, really do love this card. All right, moving along, we have a wonderful, wonderful piece of my collection here. This is one that I truly, truly do love. It is a eight-player patch, all game-worn, all game-used of Pedro Martinez, Roger Clemens, Carlton Fisk, almost a two-color patch. You can maybe even argue that it is. Yeah, you can kind of see the secondary color back there. Jason Veritek, as you can see the second color patch right there in the corner david ortiz jim rice nomar garcia para and manny ramirez now not only does it have eight red sox legends on it but it is also 12 of 12 and the significance of that is 
Well, I was born in December and I was born on the 12th day. So it being 12 of 12, all game used of Boston Red Sox legends really resonated with me. And it was a card that I think I got both of the Pedro and this card, both in the same deal. So this was a card that I absolutely had to have. And it was a card that I was not going to part ways with whatsoever. Now I've mentioned Nomar a couple times here in this video. This is probably the best card that I have of his in my PC. Don't know how valuable it is, but it's a Swing King uh, Acetate Insert. It's not numbered or anything, at least not that I know of, from 2000 Fleer. So it's a very gorgeous card. I love the Acetate cards, obviously, because they are see-through, they're clear. Uh, I just think it's really cool to be able to see through cards like that. Um, Nomar was... Red Sox best player for a handful of seasons before he got traded. I named my dog after after him. So absolutely love this card here. I'd love to get like a true rookie card of his at some point in time, maybe get it graded. But I think for now, this is kind of a blend of both worlds really for me. The, the appeal of the type of card design being acetate and of course the player itself. So there's that. Here's a really cool one. Here's a 2018 Topps Chrome Raphael Devers Update PSA 10. Very beautiful card here. Absolutely love it. Maybe a little dust on it. But this is a very awesome card. I had a different Devers card. I think it might have been like a Series 1, I think. Base Tops, I want to say. Might have been like a PSA 9. So it, it was significantly subpar compared to this card right here. Very happy to have this card in my collection. I'm glad that they re-signed him this past offseason. And then speaking of Raphael Devers, we'll continue with a beautiful on-card Bowman Chrome Auto from 2016. This is a TGA 1010. Absolutely love this card. I got this card in a deal. I forget what kind of deal I got it in. Oh, best part is number to 91 of 250. Forgot about that. I got this card in a deal. And I didn't think nothing of it. I was like, mm, maybe a buddy might want it. Then I threw it in my PC and I was like, you know what? Let me actually grade this. This looks actually looks really good. So I got it graded and it came back a 1010 with the cool Red Sox label right there. Cannot complain about this. On card Raphael Devers auto, numbered auto for that matter. All right. So here we go. We have a 2000 Skybox Dominion Tom Brady rookie card, SGC 8.5. This was a car that I picked up raw, I believe, at a show. It was one of the first Tom Brady rookies I believe I bought, and I bought it raw. And then I decided to get it graded when I used to grade with SGC, or when I used to send cards out to SGC. I never actually really graded with them, the couple of submissions. But it came back in SGC 8.5, a little underwhelming, but it's a really cool card and nonetheless. College football fan, so it's cool to see Brady in his Michigan jersey, of course, with the Patriots logo. Not going to complain about this one, but I can definitely, definitely upgrade. All right. 2007 Tops Tom Brady card. Very clean card. Not the best condition card, however. Of course, there's a little some corner wear and such, a little edge wear at the top right up there. But I love, love, love the 2007 Tops look because it's very reminiscent of the 1971 design. And I'm a big fan of 1971 design with the black borders and such and the black, you know, around the edges. So having 2007 tops be very similar in that retrospect. And then I think 2008 was white. So it was kind of really cool. Plus, I think like the quadrants of the boxes here of like the team colors is really, really cool. Plus, you got the facsimile auto right there. So it's just a lot going for this card. I really do like the look and the appeal of it. And again, uh, top 2007, whether it's baseball, whether it's basketball or football in this matter, is a fan favorite set of mine. All right. I love, love this story right here. So there was, so how I got this Mac Jones card, just the card itself. There was a guy, I've never seen him since this day. It's when Donruss, 2021 Donruss first came out a year and a half ago and he bought a box i believe or maybe it was a damaged box and the only way he was going to buy it is if we did a box battle 
So we got the box, we split the packs. I think there was six packs, so we got three each. And obviously best card pulled was gonna win the box. And I think this was in my second pack. First or second pack, I pulled this Mac Jones. And at the time, he was really the only quarterback that really did anything performance-wise, statistics-wise, hobby-wise. So just off the rip, I won. And I got all the cards, and I was like, you know what? This is the first Mac Jones in his Patriots jersey. This is the first Mac Jones card that I pulled. I sent it out to get graded. Again, when I used to send some cards out to SGC, it came back at 10. Kept it in my possession ever since. One that I never see leaving my possession ever. Again, little to no value, but the sentimental value is through the roof. Here is a very cool Jalen Waddle RPA, a three color, one, two, three RPA from 2021 Limited. Actually, I still have the box here. I didn't pull it out of this box, but I thought it would be kind of cool to show that I have a 2021 Limited box. This is numbered to 35 of 49, as you can see right there. But the thing why I have this card in my PC, not only because it's super cool and I love Jalen Waddle being a former Alabama Crimson Tide player, but it's an RPA. It's really, really cool. It's low numbered. But the reason why this card specifically is in my personal collection is because I got it in a bulk deal and I just didn't double check. I didn't do extra research. And uh, I noticed this scuffing around the gold trim of where the jersey patch is inserted so that black up there is supposed to be there this black down here is supposed to be there but as you can see there's chipping right there and then even where the black and the gold are supposed to be over here I'm trying to get it with the light you can see chipping right there and it's just disgusting like by the logo uh the rookie card logo shield the name box right there it's just all scraped up scratched up scuffed up again i got it in a bulk deal i didn't notice it at first i didn't check it until i got to the shop and i went to go price it out i was like oh man i didn't notice this oh, i can't sell this to somebody else no one's gonna want it because i'm you guys know me i'm honest i'm transparent i would have saw it i would have been like hey if you're gonna look at that waddle rpa just notice there's this this and that and then nobody's gonna want it from there so i was like you know what it's a really cool card. Let me just throw it in my PC. So that's what I did. And that's the story behind this. All right. Now this is a beast of a card. Again, nice Jalen Waddle RPA. It is a booklet RPA that is number two, 91 of 99. So very cool card here. This is a card that I got in a deal. I think I this was at the Northeast Expo back in October. If I'm not mistaken, I want to say that's that's where I got this card. And I traded a low-end Luca rookie. I think it was like a PSA 9 for it. And the kid asked me, oh, would you trade the, the Luca rookie for it? And I think I had the Luca at like 100, 125, give or take. So, I mean, Waddle, of course, was very popular back then. Was it worth a, a Luca rookie? Probably not in hindsight, but you know what? A very cool card. And I know a lot of people don't like booklets. Some people do. I am one that does, and I think this is very, very cool. I have the stand, and it just displays just like this, and I think it is beautiful how it is all displayed, and the package is shown. So another card, unless I upgrade, probably won't leave my PC, just because booklets can be difficult, and this is probably a card. I mean, the corners, is, the edges look really good, honestly. I mean, potentially gradable card, if I'm being honest. I'd have to do some further investigation on it, but the corners and the edges look really sharp, Definitely something I would consider down the road. But, all right. Then we have uh, just a couple more Paul George cards. I do display one of the Donruss rookies, the others that, that were in this pile here. They're just kind of in a stack. I don't always show them. I try to find the best one. So this is the one that I display at all times. Here's a Paul George prism, uh, prismatic prism, excuse me. Love the look of it. Obviously, he's in his Clippers jersey here. I'm a big fan of the city of Los Angeles for a variety of reasons. So it's cool to see that he's in his his Clippers jersey in this card. But I love the rainbow glare and look to it. Very, very nice card. I've gotten a flow label of this prismatic done before. It was with Jalen Brown at Disco. And the, the, the flow label was just fantastic. So if I ever do decide to grade it, I know that it's going to be a very gorgeous looking card with TGA. 
And last but not least, this card right here. Very, very cool card. This is from Star Wars Masterwork. This is a film cell relic from Luke's training on Dagobah from Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back. Gorgeous, gorgeous card all around. And yes, this is a film cell. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it through the camera or not. Here we go. So as you can see, this is where it's really cool. Try to ignore my reflection, but you can see Luke training, swinging from trees on Dagobah. Right there. Look how effing cool that is. So that is one reason why I really do like this card. I'm a big Star Wars fan. And I think I got this card for like 15 bucks at a show one time. I was walking out the door. I was like, oh, let me check this guy's table. Saw some odds and ends. I saw this card for I think it was 20 or 25. And I asked him to take 15 or 20, just $5 less. He took it and it's been in my collection ever since. And that was a couple months after the shop opened. So this arguably one of the longest tenured cards in my PC. Not going to lie. Absolutely love this card. Beautiful card. I'm a big Star Wars nerd, like I mentioned, so I would definitely love to get more of these cards in my PC of other episodes, of other characters, other relics even. Definitely something I want to venture out more into. All right, that is going to wrap it up for my personal collection. I'm very excited to have finally showed you guys what is in my PC, or at least what is in my PC as of, again, March 29th. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned I didn't know how long this video was going to be. It was a fairly longer video, so I really do appreciate you guys for joining me all the way through. And if you made it to this point in the video, please, please, please make sure you smash the thumbs up button. Let me know down in the comments if you did make it to this point in the video, and I will make sure that I get back to you saying thank you for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, I have queued up a video right here for you guys that I do believe is going to be excellent for your sports card endeavors. Hopefully, I'll see you in that one. Oh, 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 oh,